Hi everyone, welcome back into the channel. Well, I have to do another commission, so I thought I'd take you along with me. We just finished some landscapes and stuff, and so let's go back to flowers for a second. I had this one that I painted a couple of years ago as a demonstration um, in in front of, uh, you know, during a class. And so I thought, uh, well, this lady wants to have this uh, painted with that same kind of look. She said, vary the background, do your thing, but have some peach roses. And I love painting those peach roses, those ambridge roses, peach roses, nectar roses. I really like those. So I thought I'd do it here. This is a 12-inch this way, 18-inch this way, um, quarter-inch wood panel that I gave some uh the uh, white uh, canvas prep medium too and you can see I wasn't really absolutely perfect about it either because it's going to have a lot of texture a lot of stuff going on into those backgrounds and it's going to be a lot of fun this is the palette I'm going to use today this is my standard YouTube palette I do have the uh, a little bit of the light gray and medium beige out here this is the uh, Dervan open medium which works really well I might use that uh, on this other one I use just regular extender but I might use this one because it's a thin thick thing that I like to play with and I've told you about that in some of the other ones other videos and uh, so I do like to to uh, kind of control that so we'll use the open medium okay so let's get into this let's pick out you know like a light color that we have here into the background I'm going to take just an old brush and this is you know this is one of our fusion brushes and it's very old, 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 old. It starts out as a varnish brush and then gets old. You can even use just some cheap paint brushes too. Uh, I like those because these backgrounds, you know, just adds interest to the background. I'm going to take some extender. Let's grab some uh, medium beige and some of the gray. We'll push that out here. And I'm going to vary some of this color. Sometimes I, you know, on the, the other side, I'm just going to add some some extender to us and a little water. Now, why the extender and water? Water will will help it dry a little faster. The extender, that glycol, just makes the paint slide over the surface, and I really like that. And uh, when I'm, you know, doing these kinds of very casual nature uh, flowers and stuff, so and I like that to just slide. Let's grab a little water, and just. We'll push back the white is really what I'm looking for. You know, to push back that white a little bit here. And, you know, and I like, when I'm gonna be painting this casual, you get some areas that are thin, some areas that are thick, just let that happen. Don't do it so much that it starts to even out. What you wanna do right away, guys, right away is start painting casual and look for nothing perfect nothing even you know usually when you're base coating something how you work it a little bit to get that even coat across don't do it okay don't do it okay let's come over here let's grab a little beige let's grab some green maybe a little bit of violet with that green beautiful colors just beautiful colors and uh, maybe a touch of yellow over here and let's just push some of that in right out over here drop that through and uh, on the um, on the original one that I did over there when I did I also used my scraper so I'll probably be doing some of that we'll see you know and I, I let each painting kind of talk to me a little bit and that's what the the lady wants in this painting anyway let's take a little a bit of our our burnt sienna and some of that green I love those colors together working in and I just you know just grab this big brush work some of these see I, I I don't like to work it too much so I so I don't destroy the uh, modeling of the color I like it oh that you know that'd be pretty against some peach roses there like that that'd be kind of pretty let's grab a little more burnt sienna and green here. Pull some of that through. That'll be pretty right there like that. I like that. You know, on this one, I left a little lighter spot to a darker spot, and I kind of like that. And so we'll grab a little bit more color. And I'm building color here. And so I'm, I'm not pushing down on the brush very much here as I'm adding this. So I'm just kind of streaking it. Now, you can do it with your... Um, with your uh, paint scraper like I've showed you in some of the landscapes and stuff. Ooh, I like this. We can uh, do that with like the paint scraper and stuff like I showed you in some of the landscapes and stuff. But, uh, you know, using the brush like this just gives you a nice look as well. 
you know and and you know for me what i like to do is constantly vary them try things i'm a, i'm a big advocate for try you know see what happens let's put some warmer color up there some yellows which we'll use into our our uh, painting here a bit just grab some of that that's kind of a pretty now i want to i want to really get i'm just going to take a paper towel here and just kind of wipe this brush, old brush. And I want to get some more green and burnt sienna here and work that deeper right into this center area here. Maybe even streak in some bit of the red violet, which is a real super cool color. And I just love it as a deep shadow in some of that as well. That looks kind of neat. You know, pulling that through, and, you know, it's super light pressure, barely touching the surface here. And you see, you can get, you can lighten it up and get a little bit of blending of the edges and stuff, but I don't want to do too much. The edges here, we want to be able to control. So I don't want to do too much of that um, because I want some of these colors just to come out. Okay, so that sets up a good... And it's fun. <laughs> it's just, it's just fun. Sometimes I feel like, wow, okay, I'm gonna varnish that. <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I don't know if it's because I'm, I'm going a little crazy or it's just so much fun. I just love the color. You know, used to I, I would never do something like that. Now I do it. Now let's. I love this movement right in here. So I'm gonna kind of preserve that, and I'm gonna take a paper towel, the corner of a paper towel. And I'm going to lift back off. Sometimes I do this. You see me in some paintings. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I don't. I will usually do it to the queen rose, the rose that uh, I really want to stand out so I can paint it really easy into the composition without having to fight all that color. And let's drop one right over here as well like that secondary one you kind of see there. These others I might paint right into the background and let them soften out. And we'll just pull through a bit. Okay, three quarter inch brush. Beautiful peach colors come from your yellow oxide and a touch of your quinacridone violet. Those are just really pretty peach colors here. Here we go. And let's get a bit of white with that here beautiful peach color so let's get some of that color let's push that right into there three quarter inch brush big brush we'll stay big brush here for a little bit okay and we'll push that right into there we'll toss a bit of this peach maybe a little more quinacridone so it goes a little cooler back up over here we'll just kind of toss it around a bit Maybe back up over here where we're going to have one. And sometimes I'll, I'll go right into that quinacridone, those reds. Pull some of that through. Let's get a little yellow with that as well. In other words, I so I start to relax the colors a little bit further out here. And so you pick them up a bit, but, you know, the, it, into the backgrounds and stuff. So you pick them up a bit. Okay. Now... That is, boy, you know, I use that paper towel. And, you know, you have to change that paper towel pretty often when you're painting with real thick paint like this. Okay, so let's go in and let's set that the gaze of the rose. That's just going to be some, I like the real cool red violet. Sometimes on a peach I'll use a red violet with some burnt sienna and a little bit of green. I'm going to go red violet right now into this real cool color right in and what I do is I imagine okay set the gaze this is the center here so I'm gonna pick up a little heavier color on one side turn that so it's to the inside tap that down then lift the pressure and slow little half circle kind of movement here out and that'll set the gaze of that rose there and the shadow to the inside so we'll mark it right back in here we'll do the same thing we'll set this one down slightly here so we'll come around like that here. There we go. So slightly down. That'll be kind of pretty here. And uh, let's take some of that red violet, a little bit of green and stuff here. And let's just push in a little more contrast 
right here. I love to paint the background as I'm painting the flowers, because they, because uh, you see now what I'm what I'm doing when I'm doing this is I'm lifting, actually lifting the the rose off the background here. So let's just by putting in some background contrast, so I can put some right down here and lift the the view of that rose right back up off the the background here. Just like that. Okay. And then we'll come a little bit more red violet just because I want to put in some streaks of peach and stuff in there. So that'll be a good foil for the cool colors. And let's just let's thin this just a touch, some burnt sienna. We'll drag it kind of light right out here like that. Pick up some of that texture from that board when I put that on there. Just drag some of that out. Get a different feel. Now I wanna I wanna pick up some light so right up here. So I'm gonna let that dry up a bit. It kinda you know when I start something like this, yes, okay I have a I don't want to copy that other photo. One of the things is that I always tell all of you in the beginner stuff, if you want to paint casual, you use a, a photo or something like that for inspiration. But you you don't uh, at any time you don't uh, copy it at all. Okay, so um, we'll uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll just keep it and let's put a bit of that light right up here, lighter green right in here like that. See that's a pretty color. Let's get a little bit more, a little green, a little yellow. Carry some of that light over here. Just yeah, see that's gonna that's gonna pull the color from that those peach and stuff. So usually, you know, I like color to come down and especially light. I like to watch light move through a painting here. So let's grab that and let's grab a little bit of light because we can adjust this later. But see, I'll, and I usually I'll use a brush and you know manipulate color quite a bit back up in through there or even like I've done before like I've showed you before I'll take some of this like with this uh, this uh, scraper right here like this and if I really want it to loosen up I'll scrape across like this and see I get a, a completely different look to that light see I, I kind of like that and what I can do is just light pressure of the brush, not to disrupt it too much, but just to take the edges off a bit, just like that. So I'll leave some of that modeling of that light through like that. And, uh, you know, you can play and get some different looks. Scrapers and stuff just give you a real nice look and, and a different look than just having a, a brush going in there like that. So they can give you some real pretty looks. And that's pretty, that's pretty neat too. And you can do it in reverse. It doesn't have to be the light color. Like we can take a little bit of a lighter green and hit a bit of that right over here. So it's very much a contemporary. It's very fun to paint like this. And uh, I love it. It's just very fun. And uh, you know, you can experiment. Now let's go down. Let's grab an old like an 8 or a 10 or something like that. I wonder if I had a 10. Got a lot of brushes right here. <laughs> so, you know, just got a few brushes here. Now I got, now we'll use this one. This is a 10. This is an old 10, a size 10. And I, it, you know, I kind of size them when I'm looking for a brush. And people say, well, okay, what are you looking for a brush? I kind of size them where I have to do, you know, no more than three, if I'm going to build a pedal, no more than three strokes or so to build a pedal. If I have to stroke it too many times, then I, you know, more than three times, I generally go up in size a brush because I don't want to, them to get too stripy, too even, too much movement, okay? Now, so let's go in, let's take some of our peach color, we'll add a little light here to it, and let's just pull across the top of this. And I like this to kind of tack up just a bit so it's not too, it's not too wet so that the color stands. So what I do here shows up really easy. Let's drop down and drop in another little light. And so what I'm gonna vision right down in here 
I'm leaving it light for right now. I'll do that sometimes. But I'm envisioning that's where the, the shadow or the bowl of that rose is going to go right back up in there. Okay, so I'll have to fix this inside. Let's take a little quinacridone and some yellow right here because I scraped over that. We'll push some of that peach color right out there. Let's get a little more yellow into that. And Dardulite really helps your peach colors too. Really shifts it over to the, the yellows really quickly. And it's a beautiful color in, the, in there. So we'll grab that. Now let's take, let's model this brush up with some of that. We'll then slide into, it. not mix it up, don't touch it too many times. Pick up some light. So you see how that light's real heavy on that corner there. And that allows me to come right out here and draw that edge. And I'll imagine where I would have that calyx of that flower. And that's where I'm pulling down into. Maybe one, two, three. And I've set that petal right there. I'll wipe some of that extra white out of the brush. We'll, and that'll help change the color a bit. So I just pinch wipe it so I get rid of some of that white. And we'll come right out here. So see the color changes a bit. And we'll let the dark just take over. Light pressure, let the dark just take over. And that puts in the shadow, pre the shadow there of that rose. Let's change up our peach a little bit. A little more dialyte, a little more light here. We'll come back up to a light area and add in a light. Now that isn't light enough, but I'm going to continue on and let it just fade here and do the back side of that rose there for right now. But it's not light enough to sit up into the front, so I'll have to pick up some more light. We'll come in here right with it on the edge. So I pick it up pretty heavy on that edge. Okay, It's across the brush, but I lean into it and pick it up heavy right there. And that's and then I'll step way back on my brush so I keep the tip nice and light and I'll roll over to that edge and lighten up and then lift the pressure as I go back so that the, the light softens out. That's what draws it. Now let's reinforce our shadow. Let's even go down here. So down here at the bottom I'll have that red violet quinacridone, maybe even a little yellow, a little burnt sienna, nice different little color right in here. And this can be the shadow down there. Now that's a little dark. So I'll just slide a little more yellow into it right up here, both my yellows. And just make sure I state that bowl right in there. Now sometimes I'll take my finger, which I like, and just pull that around just to give the feeling of the bowl. If you get that, if you, if you preserve some of that feeling, that motion there, that gives a nice roundness to your rose. Okay, and uh, let's come up here, pick up just a soft little light, and we'll use that right back here to kind of suggest. So I use just the edges, see? And I do quick little, quick little strikes, just little edges, and see, that's all I need, because my original motion is this circular motion, so I just need little edges here to suggest petals. I don't need to paint petals, I just need to suggest the edges. Let's close this up, maybe suggest a little petal edge right there, closing up that edge there, like that. That's kind of pretty there. Let's build the front of it. Now we'll go more into our peach colors. Let's look at the peach color, a little more dialyte, a touch of that, that uh, nice quinacridone. That's a pretty peach color right there. We'll build a little bit more to the front of the rows here. Just pulling down, stopping by that bowl, okay? And uh, let's restate the bowl. Remember I say that so many times in, in paintings. Always restate, refine, restate that bowl. Matter of fact, let's walk that bowl color right out into the rose petals a bit here to soften that. Hit some shadow. So I hit some shadow back here and I drug it up through there. And you go, oh my gosh, I just screwed up the rose. I used to always think that, that I just screwed up the rose and and freak out and go, oh, take it off and make a hole and, you know, and, and uh, no, I don't worry about that anymore. It's color and it's good color. Just relax because let what happens, happens. It's color, it's good color. I look at the color and I go, wow, that really is a pretty color coming from right down in here, from that uh, that green and that burnt sienna. And I wonder if I can just grab some of that 
and just pull some of that down into this shadow because that's really kind of a pretty color in that rose. I always look at it. If I need to change it, yeah, I'll grab a little more quinacridone or something like that here. Cool that off like that, see? And uh, But I don't need to really change that here. I can grab this here and grab a little more light. Let's just pull that down. Let's keep this really let's keep this a little more chunky here and keep this flower a little more chunky here let's put a, a chunky a little more thick in paint here and we'll push this in just a bit more here like that here a little bit heavier a little lighter that's a pretty color of a rose there like that building that up like that and then let's take, I just, I love doing this. <laughs> I just, it just, I love doing this. Trying it, trying it, and trying different things. Hitting some happy accidents, you know. And let's uh, draw in a little more light on that edge, just like we did before, but a little bit lighter. Let's draw that one in here. Pull that in here like that. We'll pull down and reset some of that shadow there. I like that and I wanna make sure I keep a little bit of that burnt sienna green kind of red violet in there as well because that's just a pretty tone in there. Push some of that right up over here. Okay, and build lighter. Let's build some more. Build some more, just a stroke or two. Now, just following the, the, the flow of the rose that you've already established, add a few more light petals, maybe a tiny bit of yellow into that. Warms it up a bit more. Let's go a little lighter. And pick up that edge, that light, right? Doom, just like that, see? We'll lean over onto that edge and we'll do that petal edging technique, that drawing. Now, I got it a little bit too far there. So before I go too far, I'll stop, wipe that white out of my brush because it's a, it's a really an opaque color. Let's go down into some softer peach color and let's walk back up into that light and remove some of that so we don't destroy the shape of our rose. And we'll build this one back up to the front. We'll let those just kind of move together there. That's, that one's kind of pretty, <laughs> okay? It's, it's fun, it really is fun. Now we'll draw one more, maybe right out here. And then, since I don't want to drag that anymore, see if I had so much white in my brush, if I keep doing that, I'll drag it and I'll lose that shadow. So I'm gonna come back here, and this is why I always have this paper towel, wipe my brush, Let's go back into some shadow and let's just soften the edge. It's like a halftone technique that you see me all the time use, a little halftone technique. And I'm just gonna hit a few areas here to kinda, kinda bring in the edge of a petal there, just a soft little petal. And let's soften up this edge a bit here. What I mean by that is I'll draw draw the light down just a touch more here and and remove some of that heavy texture line, which will soften it. Let's put this one back in out here a little further so that, there we go. That looks kind of pretty right in there. Now let's put a, let's get brave with a bit more of a quinacridone color to peach. So we'll get over here and let's just drop that right down in here. That's the color she wants right in there. Okay, so we'll drop that. And sometimes you eliminate a little bit too much of your shadow when you do that. But see, I love to come back and hit some of these areas with some of this peach color because that's the main color of the rose we wanna get. And if you get too much light, too much whites and yellows in there, they'll opaque out and so you, sometimes you have to come back and just hit it again. See, I, I do like that. I want to see a lighter. Let's grab a bit of this a real light, kind of a textured hit here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, just like that. Pick up some of that color. Now, as we come down into here, into the shadow side of it, we're going to go a little darker down into our peach, maybe even a little bit of that burnt sienna. 
burnt sienna yellows right down in here and this will bring out some more of the peach color of the rose right down in there this petal's a little too flat i think funny as I, I look and i do one thing my eye jumps to another one too as well i look through the flower so we'll just pop that out let that fade down that's kind of pretty let's um put on a soft little edge right here and just pull some of that down. We won't paint that rose too much over here. Maybe a, a little bit more of an edge. We'll just draw up an idea of a petal here. And we'll just leave that. Just sit out there like that for right now. We'll go down to our other one. Slightly different kind of a peach color here. So a little bit more of the yellows and stuff into that. And I'm going to add a little open medium. This is going to keep it, it's going to um, keep it wet here for a second as I manipulate these petals. I'll, I've got to be careful going into this green because I'll pick up some of that green and drag it real far, far into the painting. So you be careful as you hit that. If you pick up a lot of green, you've got to stop and wipe your brush because you don't want to, because that green is almost a compliment and it'll gray down everything you want to do. Let's put a bit more of that peach right in there. So I'm always kind of looking at what's underneath my flower when I'm looking at it, because I know if I'm in a wet situation, see, and I'm very wet in here. It's still very wet. If I'm in a wet situation, then I know I'm going to pick up that color, and it's going to start, and all right, so I'm aware of what that color is and what's going to happen to my brush when I pick it up. And so I know here I'm going to get some toning. So here I'm just going to... so. And we liked that green and that burnt sienna, so let's just pull some of that right up into this flower right here. Let's just take a stroke of that right through there, too. Pull some of that right up into that flower for right now. Pull some more of this lighter peach here. In like this. Here. We'll grab this lighter here. Pull that down. Now I don't want to go too much lighter than that. Let's grab some of this light right on the edge so we can draw this petal in here. Now, see how that slides like that? You know, that's part of that open medium there, really sliding there. And the paint's not sticking quite so much because it's a little bit too slippery, okay? It's a little too slippery for what I want to do with that petal. So I'm going to move on for a second and give that a, just a little bit here to tack up. So it stiffens up a bit. We'll go more peach here. We'll just add some of this right down here onto this other side here. And we'll move on with that rose a bit. Let's, um, let's open up that center a bit more here. Okay, so we'll open this up. So I'll take some of that red violet and just spin it around here. That opens that rose a touch more. And let's take a touch of that red, red violet right down in there as well. Nice, deep, little dark. I do like that. Let's, uh, let's get brave and try. A little quinacridone, a little red, violet here. I like those kind of marks here. Push some of that in there. Those colors there. That's kind of pretty. And uh, we'll work some more soft peach, slightly different, a little more quinacridone into this one right back through here. Slightly round through. Just the movement, like I tell you so many times in roses, when I paint, you know, when I paint roses, and a lot of you like the roses, what I do is I paint for movement more than petals. I'll paint movement, then I'll come back in and add petals. But I'll paint movement first, so, and then I'll come back in. After I have this in and out movement, here's my bowl, my petal movement's going in and out a little bit, then I'll come back and set the petals here. Sometimes just a little edge of it is all that petal needs to say it's a petal. I don't need to I don't need a ton of stuff going on in there just to say it's a petal. 
This is starting to tack up a little bit, but it'll still be a bit <laughs> for that one. Let's uh, get some more peach here, color. And we'll come back up over here. We'll set just a idea of one. Got a little tiny bug. Set the idea right there of one. Take a bit of the quinacridone. Not quinacridone, red violet. Let's just drop in the center, which causes the movement here. We'll pull down. So it just sets up like there's a top rose right up there, just like in the other one there. And uh, we'll use some soft peach color here to kind of set the shape for the front of it there. Maybe a little bit more with some yellow, some lighter color and some yellow here. Let's set that in here. There we go. And we'll set a bit more light up into the front. Very casual, very quick little painting back here. And let's go back into quinacridones, the darks, just kind of, and just kind of swirl that around a bit. That's kind of neat. Put a mark or two of color back in there just to move the color out. And I could have maybe a touch more of a lighter peach into that. Maybe I'll add a bit of the open medium. Why? Because it'll cause my brush to slide and not give me an opaque cut, uh, stroke. See how I get that little edge there? That's the brush sliding off the surface. And I do like the open medium. Extender does the same thing, but a little thinner. The open medium works quite nice for that. So I use it to, not always just to keep it wet, but to cause my paint to slide a little bit and give a different look or feeling to it, you know? And it's just a fun medium to play with. Let's put a bit of that light right up here on the front of this rose. Turn that feeling that way just a bit. So see, I just pick up, when I have it right there like that, I just go like this and I just grab that. And it makes a wonderful little edge to draw something. So now that this is tacking up and stuff, see, I can come in here and I can start to draw an edge. I want it a little wider than that, so I'll work it a little wider across my brush. And so the edge is a little wider here. And that's kind of neat, we can pick up bit more of that edge. Just draw one right in there. Here, but see, it's a, they're a little too stripey for me, so I'm just going to widen that color out into the brush and take another stroke down. So I get rid of some of that stripiness. I like that movement of that color, but I don't like the stripiness of it. And so that's just by putting it on the edge or working it across your brush a couple of times, a couple of strokes. And working it across your brush will make it appear a little bit softer across your brush. Let's build just a bit more, maybe a touch more yellow. And we'll take a kind of a brave stroke here. Build the front of this rose up a bit and make it look a touch different here. Way different from what I painted last time, but that's okay. And we'll pick a bit more of the quinacridone and some of that peach color here. And let's work this peach a bit more here. There we go. Just like that. And bit back to a bit of light here to push in a Another petal maybe right there, right like that. Little different shape of a rose. I always kind of like to make different shapes for them. I want to bring this one edge of this petal back up a bit more. So we'll grab a bit more light. See, it's just a little bit on the edge and I lean over onto that edge to draw it here. Pull that down in here like that. Let's lighten that petal a bit more and a bit more yellow. Just so it's a little, and just hit and lift here. 
push some of that light right out there. And it's a little stripy, so what do you do? You hit the light edge and then you walk it across your brush a bit so that it, so it comes off a little softer. There we go. And let's just drop this one in a bit more. There, that's kind of pretty between those right there, those colors. Kind of liking that. And uh, yeah, let's get back to a little darker peach, which will come from our the uh, yellow oxide, quinacridone, and a touch of the red violet. Here, it's pretty and it's darker here. We'll push that right in here as a rose is going to go there, maybe one right down there. Let's grab some red violet here, right on the edge, and kind of make that center of that rose here. Start out with that. So I pick up that red violet, see, and I put it on that corner. So I have a real dark corner. I'll force it right down in there and then slowly shape it coming out here. And casual little strokes there. And then we'll pick up. A little bit lighter peach here, but not too light. And we'll shape, we'll keep these petals here kind of soft as it comes in on that side. We can, you know, and this is a thing, if I go through, if I wanted to really build up these roses, I can come through and actually paint them again, which would build up more color and uh, more opacity to them. I kind of like this kind of, transparent kind of look to it but some areas need a little bit more pushing up a little more color just for the interest of the rose so there and I loved it you know I'll let that dry there just a bit and I'll come back and work on this one for just a touch more work some of that color out see if I want to have some of that and quinacridone is a beautiful one for the big top one here push some of that in and then right into some of your yellow see you just it's kind of like just stroking over it with some of these other colors and look at the power and contrast of the painting that we're adding into it now see and uh, we'll soften that as soon as you add any kind of white it softens it a bit see softens that intense because white's a toner and so it does tone the colors down softens their intensity and I'll push some more contrast dark into that. So now I've got some nice contrasting roses there. Let's take some of that contrast, drop that right into there, soften it with just some white, just add some white. That's gonna lighten it and soften it a bit. There we go. See, I just, and it just pops those flowers just a bit more. And we can, not quite so light, so let's just grab a little yellow, a little quinacridone here, softer back here. A little bit softer, a little more white. You could even use like a bit of your gray or medium beige if you really wanted them to soften down here. Here we go, just like that. Let's put another little petal or two, smaller one, working right in there. That's kind of pretty. And see, you can control it, but sometimes, you know, I'll just go in there and go, okay, I'm getting a little soft, so I'll just get brave with a little color, push that in, and really try to fire it. And it seems like every time I do that, my customers really like it. You know, and uh, so I try to do it. Get brave and do it here. Let's drop a bit of that pinky here. There we go. That's pretty little. And maybe uh, a little softer edged petal right across the front there. See how I just draw that down, and it, when I draw that down, I go down and then onto this chisel, drawing that down onto its chisel, which just kind of fits it right there under the bowl. It's kind of pretty. Let's put a 
bit more of that brighter yellowy peach right in there. Just hit that, build that up. So I'll build up. So here I'm just going to build this up a bit right in there. So it sits up on top. And I may decide to do it right in there too. Uh, I'm kind of liking it. But if I decide that I look at it for power, how weak it is, and it's just a touch weak there, I could do a little bit of this, which is which helps build up that edge. See, I'll pick up some texture kind of strokes, set back on my brush, and just kind of lay it in here like that. And... It just, but I try to follow the, the movement of the petal. And then I can come back and clean it up a bit with the edge of the brush where I need it. And, gives, and it gives a lot of nice movement into the petal there like that. Let's just take some of that right back up here. A little bit more light. Right back up here and build this one a bit more. See how, how I build that? See how it's jumping off there? Just a touch more. Now, in doing so, I kind of wiped out my shadow, but don't worry. We are professionals. We can put it back, okay? Just take some of your peachy color, darker stuff here, and just work that bowl kind of right back in there. And there it is again. And we can lighten up that front edge here a bit more. Pulling that down. That works. You can use that little edge to slide along, you know, that pedal or slide like the idea of a pedal there. That works too. Something like that. I do like breaking their lines there. That's kind of pretty, gives a different look to those. I like that one up there. Let's build uh, a bit more down here on the bottom. Some of that yellow oxide, a little bit of the quinacridone and red violet will build just a bit more. The rose will go a touch darker so it won't get as much light. And I'm just going to kind of tap it around a bit, kind of smear it around with my finger because I don't need to have very much down here. It doesn't, you know, you look at this one right here, you go, what is that? It's a blob with a couple light spots on it. Doesn't You don't need to paint a beautiful rose down here. You'll just start to take it away from the rest of the painting. So we'll grab some of our, our, our nice inside cooler color there and just do a whisper of it. And maybe even just a whispers of color and stuff down here. And even just kind of like do like the idea, like there's a rose right there, okay? And this is what really gets me all the time. Let me do this here. So I'll take some of this yellows and peaches and colors here, and I'll just kind of put this, it's not a blob, it's a casual application of color. Okay, so, and I always joke with that, but I'm very serious about something, guys, okay? If you say blob in your mind, you're going to paint a blob, okay? If you just kind of jokingly say a casual application of color, you put an app casual application of color, okay? Don't just say blob because you will paint a blob, okay? <laughs> Even though you may think it looks like a blob, don't paint blob. Now I'm just going to take a bit of my dark red violet, push it up onto the side, and it's really, it's that what makes it into a rose is that center. I can take any casual application of color and make it look by like a rose just by giving it that center. Maybe a little bit of a bowl or something like that. And it starts to look like a little rose coming in there. I could put a couple petals on there, but that might be too much. I'm not going to do that. So now let's just come in, grab some of our green. I love the green, burnt siennas. Those are pretty colors. I'm going to add some extender to this. So it slides and it's a bit transparent. And I like the transparency of it here. And I'll slide some of these leaves, casual leaves on here. I love the casual leaf shapes here. And sometimes I'll make them more opaque like I did over there on the inner ones, but these outer ones here, I'm just gonna make ovals, this one side down the other, leave a little bit 
here and let it tack for a second and then slide off some of that color so that that color so it just gives the impression of a leaf here change up the color a bit we can add a few little marks like maybe that's some back stuff there add a little more green so it gets a little more green here and let's just pull that one in just a bit more green into it Real pretty like that. They're fun and you know and you can never ever paint them the same way again. We'll put some more back down here. I mean they're, because they're so casual. You can use them for inspiration but you'll never be able to. So this composition is going to look kind of similar to that one. I think the client will like that. What I did was some of this other one here is so I took some of this at the end, kind of mixed it together a little bit like that, and kind of pulled it through to give some of this other look right over there like that. And let's get some more greens up there. Right there. Let's just drag that across. It's kind of pretty. Push that. Out. See, I'll, sometimes I'll leave it. Sometimes I'll soften that mark like I do there. And you can soften it by pushing back and forth a bit, you know, to, to what we call fracture that color. Or I can wipe it with the edge of a paper towel to help fracture it. Sometimes I leave it. I just like that color out there like that. That's neat. I want to pull. Darn, I didn't make up enough of this color over here. Let's just pull some of that right out over here right into that let some of those marks hit that and then we'll soften some of those edges just push that color over there like that and that'll give me room to put in some real nice let's go if I want to get a dark color leaf it's the pine green and the uh, red violet then add a little extender so we Make that nice and transparent here. Let's just grab a dark leaf shape or so right there. Put that in, that'll give a good foundation for a light one in just a moment. We'll just, this is negative painting. I can shape up a rose by painting the background, you know, here. And I'll do that sometimes, like shape up the edge of a petal or something like that. Drop some of that around. I do love as I head out, I like the color to warm a bit. So I'll grab that burnt sienna. Just grab that down. They're just fun paintings here and you try some things. And I always tell my students, you know, when you're a selling artist, if it doesn't work, just lower the price. <laughs> so, but, there, but this is how you find looks. I mean, I did this as an example. Uh, everyone in the class was asking me, how do you get real casual? And I said, you have fun. You try things and you have fun. And the problem is, as it starts to get pretty, you start to get more tensed up because you don't want to make a mistake. And that's true, it is very true. Let's put in some ideas of some stems right in here. Just some ideas, some ideas of a little extender here. I'll look, maybe an idea of a leaf. See, I like this kind of leaf color right there coming out right against that other. We'll just pull a bit of it off, leave a bit of its shape. I like that. That's where my brush just touched, so we'll just add a few other little movements there. Make it look like you know what you're doing. Here, that's kind of pretty, like there. Yeah, and, you know, maybe an idea of a little mark or so coming out there. It's kind of pretty. You could put a few other little bits of these touches of color, like right back up there if you want. Uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, let's just grab some of this, some of this and some white here. These yellows. Nice modeled of the peach color, a little bit of green, which grays it. Remember I said that earlier. And uh, let's just grab just a bit of that. 
just a touch of that tone right up in there. You pick that rose color up. See, this is a little plain right here, so we can just grab that rose color right in there and break some of that right there like that. That's what I start to look for. Maybe some of this right in modeled into this burnt sienna and stuff right down here. And so if you put something on and you go, whoop, that's a little too light for that area. And it's not yet one of those lower to price things. Just take some more of the other darker colors and go over it and then work it in. Look at how pretty that comes. Just zoom right down there like that. Makes it look like you know what you're doing. So, you know, you, you, there's always a way to get out of it. If you put too much on it, then you put on the complement or something and you get back out of it. Now... I like all that. I do like this one with the lighter leaves that I decided to put in on this side because it rounds up the composition here. Right now that drops down and that's really nice. If I want to preserve that, I would put darker leaves here. But over there, I do like that one where I have. And so what I went is I flipped over to a lighter leaf. I'll just put some of this peach color into some of my greens here. And I'll, I'll draw the leaf oval here. Leave a little bit there like that and leave this lighter, a little more peach color into this one. Let's draw the little lighter sh uh, set here of the leaf shape. Just drag off the edges a bit, break the edges here, just like that. You can, you know, I like to, when I do that, I like to take a kind of a light color on the chisel just got give an indication of a vein line sometimes here there yeah that's kind of neat let's put a darker little green little mark break that red right there a second a little bit of sometimes I just look for marks just the color that's all I'm looking for is the color and um, yeah we'll do that let's go a little darker and boom in we go right in there like that so I like that I you know I I do like you know I love those colors that I drugged right down to there and I'd love to take some of that peach maybe a little bit grayed and just a little bit more drag that down here and then we'll call this, I think. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. And I, I don't think I want to, of course, you'll, you'll never, this is still wet. I don't think I want to do anything more to those. It'll, and when you're using acrylics like this, it'll dry down. And then it'll, it will come back to life again when you varnish it and stuff. But I love those kind of a rich colors in there. You could put color spots in it. Those of you who like more contrast, you could put more color spots and stuff in it. But it's really kind of a, a, a fun way. And your hands should look like your roses. <laughs> you know, you get that. It's from all of that wiping of the, with the paper towel. They get all over. Thank goodness everything I use is non-toxic, so I don't have to worry about it. But there you go. That's how you do it. And, of course, you know, you can use compositions like this. You can go whites. Wouldn't this be pretty with whites and violets and whites, violets, yellows in there? Those would be pretty. You can toss in little blossoms. There's just all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. You can, you know, make more of a rose bush or you can put, like, the edge of a container. This is falling out the edge of a container. Very contemporary. Just lots of stuff. But uh, that's what I do. This is what I do. And, uh, you know, with my paintings and stuff all the day. Now, this morning I was painting a landscape here in the studio. And so in the afternoon, I just, when I always feel, I go to my commission paintings when I feel nice and warmed up and ready to go. And I'm really good with that, you know, because on that landscape, I was sliding around that, that uh, paint scraper and stuff. So I feel, and I go into a rose like this, it just always feels really good, you know, really good to do that. So, but you don't, when you're building those petals, guys, you don't need to paint too much after you do the initial color. See, by leaving some of those greens and stuff, I gave this transparent effect to this rose, making it softer, okay? 
And that takes practice. The stuff that I show you here makes it look really easy when I'm doing it, and it's not. I know it's not. It is, it is hard, it takes practice. And if you use a completely different acrylic than me, it's gonna be completely different. You know, these acrylics that I use, these are acrylic that I designed, I drive them, I know how to work everything with them. But they're glycol-based acrylics, and so they can slow way down or I can dry them real fast. Some acrylics that are out there, like I had one right in me, I, you know, I'm using such and such a brand, and it just dries into a blob right away. Well, those are some acrylics are made to dry really fast, okay? I've built them. I was a chemist for many years and built acrylic painting systems, and they, we build them to dry fast so you can do different types of techniques. They work great with halftone techniques, but uh, you know these types of techniques, you'll see me slow it down a little bit and do some different things with it. Some acrylics can't do it. Okay, and so if you're fighting something, just go find another one that maybe has a glycol base, and you can always right away to the company and find out. Find it has a glycol base, and then you can use that, okay? All right, there you go, nice, rich, fun roses, okay? And uh, hey, don't forget to click like on this, this video. That helps us out a lot. Go watch it again, too. And uh, then... Uh, don't forget to help share it and the videos. It, if you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click that little bell so that when we upload videos, you see the next one, you'll get notified that the video is uploaded, okay? All right, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna see something else, I've got a bird that we're gonna be doing next, I think, too. And, and, a, and a seascape, <laughs> got that, too. Okay, so hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys on the next one, okay? Thanks a lot for joining me. I'll see you then.